Hello, welcome to the Missoula Art Museum's Virtual Art in the Moment, an art program for those experiencing dementia and their caregivers. Just so you know, this is a recorded segment, so you're welcome to watch, watch it again and again at your own convenience, and you can all, often stop it if you'd like to pause it for a minute and then resume. All right, my name is Kay Grissom Kylie. I'm the Curator of Education at the Missoula Art Museum, and I'm here with professional artist and teaching artist, Bev Glugert. Hi, everybody. You will notice that we are wearing masks today, and this is um, one of the requirements of the Missoula Art Museum during the time that we're open to the public in order to keep each other safe, and we're keeping each other safe today during this video as we are recording. So we're standing in the shot and silver art galleries behind me <clears throat> at the Missoula Art Museum. This is where the exhibition Christy Hager Equal, a work in progress, is on display. This entire building that we're in right now used to be the Andrew Carnegie Library, the public library. And in 1974, it became the Missoula Art Museum. We are really excited to have you here with us today. And um, next to us is uh, one of Christie's self-portraits. And this is a recent self-portrait and depicts the artist as she looks today. During all education and public programs, Ma'am Reads Aloud, it's acknowledgement statement in honor of the land that we're standing on. Written in conjunction with tribal leaders, Mam sits on the ancestral territories of the Salish and Ponderay peoples, and we respect the indigenous stewards of this land. Mam acknowledges their rich cultures as fundamental to artistic life in Montana and to the work of Mam. So during the next 30 minutes or so, um, Kay and I will be sharing a little bit with you about Christy Hager's exhibition, Equal, as a whole. So you'll be able to look at individual pieces of artwork in the exhibition, and you will be able to reflect and to respond. So please have paper and a pencil ready. So what is this exhibition, Christy Hager, Equal, a work in progress? As you can see, this exhibition includes large-scale black and white portraits by Missoula artist Christy Hager. All of these women depicted are women who she respected in her life. Most of these women were acquaintances of hers, except for one portrait of someone that is a heroine to, to Christy. And I will be showing you that piece a little bit later on. This exhibition is bookended by two amendments to the United States Constitution. Women's suffrage, the right to vote, became universal in the United States with the passage of the 19th Amendment in 1920, exactly 100 years ago. And then a push in 1923 for the ERA, Equal Rights Amendment, which prevents discrimination based on gender. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. It wasn't until 49 years later, in 1972, that the ERA was approved by Congress and sent to the states for full ratification. In order for the ERA amendment to be added to the Constitution, 38 states must ratify with a seven-year deadline. Only 35 states ratified, and since then, several have rescinded. Despite many advancements, the equality of men and women is still not explicitly stated in the U.S. Constitution. Considered the largest reform movement in U.S. history, the campaign for women's voting rights lasted more than seven decades and resulted in the passing of the 19th Amendment, which advocates, which advocates saw as essential 
to achieving economic, social, and political equality. Hager goes on to say, I thought the ERA would be ratified in my, in my lifetime, but it continues to be a work in progress. It is the legal part of what humans want, political, social, and economic equality. Full equality is the work of lifetimes. Hager began this series by painting her great-grandmother, mother, goddaughter, friends, and a heroine, but the exhibition, as the title suggests, is a work in progress, with portraits continuing to be added to the series. Hager says, we stand on the shoulders of giants, and we are asked to be giants for the next generation. Our time here is short, but important. Christy Hager was inspired by the Women's March in January 2017 when she decided to commit her artwork to celebrate women as friends and heroines. She calls the work unequivocal portraits and says she intended them to be clear and unambiguous because it represents the unambiguous birthright we all have to equality. This portrait by Christy Hager is a portrait of the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Hager's heroine. Christy Hager had a great admiration and respect for Ginsburg as a legal advocate for gender equality and women's rights. President Bill Clinton nominated her to the Supreme Court in 1993, and she served until her death in 2020. As the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg explained, Every constitution written since the end of World War II includes a provision that men and women are citizens of equal stature, but ours does not. Now we'd like to share a video of Christy Hager speaking about her artwork in this exhibition. Hi everybody, I'm Christy Hager. I'm an artist here in Missoula. And um, I invite you to come and see this exhibit when you can. It will be up uh, until early February, so you have some time. And it really is an experience to walk through it. Um, so, yeah, please do. Well, the, the title of this show is uh, Equal, A Work in Progress. And I was inspired because I realized in 2017, it just occurred to me again, at the Equal Rights Amendment that was tried to be passed by all the states um, starting in 1972. It, never, it had never been passed. We still don't have an Equal Rights Amendment, which allows for um, equal treatment uh, regardless of sex in, in the entire United States, an amendment to the Constitution. So I wanted to do a tribute to women, and that's why this show is all women. Well, I think what's special about art is that it's, it's a, it is a cultural expression. It can speak to you uh, without words, you can, uh, like music, um, visual art, uh, and so it can communicate on many levels besides the written word, and also as a cultural uh, expression, it can um, touch you in a way that reading the law is still abstract. And um, so this is a, a very non-abstract representation of, of uh, these women's humanity. And what I feel is their very unambiguous birthright, which is equality, and which is, which is all people's birthright. So this fabric is a... Um, cotton scrim. It's, it's actually called tobacco cloth because I think it's, it's a cloth that was first designed to shade tobacco. 
so it filters light through it. And um, I liked it because you could see the images from both directions and I knew I wanted these to hang in space rather than being against the wall. So as you walk around them, you can see them from both sides. And um, also I felt that uh, this transparency, um, it made me think of just that our time, each of our time on the planet is relatively short. And the uh, working for justice and equality takes many gen generations. So I wanted to show these generations in relation to each other so that you could see sort of through one face and one generation to another and see how we're all connected. Christy, do you want to talk a little bit about why you chose um, to include some historical figures or um, women that you didn't know personally? Well, um, there's there's only two women in the show that I don't know personally, and that's my great grandmother hmm. um, and uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I really wasn't sure that I should do a portrait of a famous person. And, um, but because of the Equal Rights Amendment and her specific work um, as a lawyer before she became Supreme Court Justice, I felt like I was drawn to do her portrait. And so I just said, I'm going to do it. If it doesn't work in the exhibit, fine, I, I have to do her portrait just because she means so much to me. And so I, I had the disadvantage of not having ever met her and not being able to take her portrait because when I take a photograph of my friends, I'm in control of the lighting and the gaze and everything. But she had a lot of formal portraits done and I was able to find one that I felt would work. And um, so I'm, I'm really, um, it's very important to me at this time to have this portrait done and be included in this show as she was a champion of equality for everybody, uh, but she was always aiming to uplift women because she, she experienced a lot of discrimination. She graduated at the top of her class in law school and couldn't get a job in New York because she was a woman and a mother and Jewish. And her first, then she got a job in academia, her first teaching job, because she couldn't get a job in the law office. And they said, well, we're going to hire you, but we're going to pay you less because your husband has a good job. And so as a woman on the faculty, uh, law faculty, you're gonna get paid less than the men. It, it's, it's just the way it was, and it's still not over <laughs> uh, in terms of equal pay. So um, I, I think that having her in the show has, um, is an especially poignant at this time. As we look, there will be several ways for you to interact today. If you have someone with you, you can turn to that person to discuss, respond, or to ask a question. You can even pause your video to do this. Write comments down on a piece of paper. You can also sketch or draw onto a piece of paper. This is a recorded segment, so you can watch it as many times as you'd like. Have your paper or sketchbooks and a pencil ready. What do you notice or wonder about these portraits? What is the first thing 
that catches your eye. What do you notice about how the pieces are arranged or positioned in the gallery? Can you think of your own narrative or story for these portraits? Think for a moment about the possible relationships of all these women to the artist. And think of the women that you know. How might Hager have chosen these particular women to paint? What women in your life would you choose to make portraits of if you were completing this project? Over the past three years, Christy Hager painted her mother, her grandmother, friends, girls, mother-daughter pairs, and two self-portraits. There are 22 portraits in total, and there will be more as Christy continues to paint them. As you look at these paintings, what do you notice about the gaze of these women? Or about their facial expressions? What is unexpected or different from the usual images that we see of women. How do these portraits impact you being painted on scrim, which Christy described to us, a piece of gauze cloth that appears opaque until lit from behind then it becomes sort of see-through, often used as a screed or a backdrop. The pieces appear to be floating in the air. Hager wanted to honor women, but not in the traditional way of honoring people where large framed portraits of men dominated the walls of institutions. She wanted to push against that tradition in a constructive way. Hager stated recently about her exhibit, I like the movement, that when there's a little air moving, it sort of breathes a little life into the portrait. There is an absence of realistic color in favor of elevating the use of grayscale blacks and whites, lights and darks, gradations, transparency, and opacity, which is more solid. Why do you think the artist might have made these choices? Hager used five values of gray acrylic paint she wanted the images to be large, to hold a direct gaze, and to show generational interconnectedness. All of these artistic choices were arrived at through experimentation and trial and error. Christie thoughtfully worked from photos she had taken and also from charcoal drawings that she made. In what ways have you been inspired by this artist? Who is a woman that you might choose to paint in a similar way? Our time here has unfortunately come to an end. 
But if you press pause on any of the images in this video, you can continue to see Christy Hager's artwork and you can continue creating with your pencil. You may very well want to sketch a portrait of your own. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you'll tune in for MAM's upcoming Art in the Moment on the first Monday of each month. Tune in next month on Monday, January 4th at 2 p.m. for MAM's next Art in the Moment. Please remember that the museum is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5 p.m. Please, we invite you to come and visit the Missoula Art Museum and experience this exhibition in person. The museum is always free of charge. Thank you to Montana GEC at the University of Montana for sponsoring Art in the Moment and for the continued support of Dementia Friendly Missoula and the Missoula Aging Services.